So hello everybody on the internet. Today we're going to be having some fun with channels. Um, sometimes when you're working you want to do a, a quick client type thing and you need to send out a ton of stuff to the internet but maybe you don't want to send too much on the internet at once. But really you just want to run a for loop, create a ton of functions that create some stuff and you want to do a thousand of them but maybe the internet bandwidth will only allow you to do 50 at a time or something like that. Doesn't really make a whole lot of difference, but this is kind of my use case I'm thinking. I don't want to send out too many requests at the same time. So I'm going to put them all in a loop and send them to a worker, a working group, and they will do all of them, but only running 50 at max at a time or whatever number I choose. So I'm just going to get that set up and show you how we get it working or at least how how I think is effective. So I'm going to make a new project, or I've already oh, CD. So here is an empty package, and I'm just going to make a fairly straightforward Go file. It's going to be this will be a library, so to test it, I'm going to actually do it in testing. So vim worker dot go uh, package work works and the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to make um, a struct so we'll call it wg for work group it's probably not the best name but who cares struct and in this we're going to need a couple of channels first we're going to need the main channel which is going to receive um, the functions and it's just a, a plain function and it's also going to have an all done channel and that will be boolean. I don't think it needs anything else. So we'll make our new function and common in Go is just do, new. if it's a whole package that's just a really basic API, just call that function new. So, and this will return a WG and As we do this, actually, let's let's receive a number. Let's receive n, which is an int, and that is how many workers we have running. So we've got a number of workers. So I guess we can start a for loop. For i colon equals naught, semicolon i is less than n i plus plus. That's a pretty standard for loop. I'm sure you'll all agree. And now. Um, go func that takes no parameters we call that function because go requires the function to be called and all it's going to do is it's going to listen on our result we don't have a wait group yet so i'm going to call this res because that's my my most likely name for anything like this and our wait group needs um well our main will be make channel obviously the channel has to be made if you're not apparently you can't put anything on it without creating automatic deadlock kind of makes sense chan funk and all done make chan bool so there's our, our wg and now what we'll do is we'll listen to that we'll listen to so f colon equals listen to res dot main if f equals nil which is what you'll get if the function is closed right um we can send out something oh yes well well for now we'll just return and otherwise we will loop this should this should loop so Oh, and we need to call that function. If it's if it is a if it's a real function, we just need to call it, right? So we have our function that will basically start. We create however many people have ordered. We're expecting a number like fifty-ish. Uh, it could be less, I suppose, or it could be more. And we just create that many of these worker functions that just call the function. And now. We're going to need a thing to make sure we know when we're finished. So 
let's start again at the top here and we'll add another channel for we'll call it proc done colon equals make a channel which takes a function no it doesn't it's just another bool why did I put brackets on that one so it's just another panel and on this one we will we will feed into this proc done and we'll send it true doesn't make any difference what you send in fact it probably could just be an empty thing that's just to count so the theory is when we've finished all of the work we're going to receive an empty thing and we just want to make sure that all of the functions have finished doing their thing fairly tidy fairly straightforward so now we run another for loop no we don't we'll start a function go func and in this function for up for i cannot equals naught i is less than n i plus plus we will just listen to that channel but and the reason i'm doing it with a count not a close is because these functions are never going to know when they're the final one so we're just going to count and make sure we've done them all um underscore colon e no not colon equals underscore equals and then we read proc done so and then when that is done we can send something out on res dot all done that was all done lowercase all done and we'll send true again doesn't have to be true it just needs to send something to say that it's done and then we just need two other functions func wg that's our, our weight group and that will be add so we can and that will take a function and this is really simple it's just going to put it on to the main channel so really we could make that channel public externally but i'm not going to um i'll just make it a function for now and that is wg dot main and that receives that so yeah that we might be able to expose that externally but i feel like this is kind of tidier func wg takes a weight group and this is weight and actually what this weight will do is what we we tell it we've finished so we'll send wg dot main and down this i will close it and then we will listen for um, underscore can equals listen to wg dot all done and so when we receive a flag down all done it's the whole thing is completed so oh problem line 35 column 3 uh, here we are go functions must be invoked otherwise that makes no sense so a quick round through on what I believe I've done We've created the type which has two functions but no one needs to access them we have our new function which is where it's created and in this we make a ton of of go funks that listen to the channel and and send stuff in and and when they've all received an empty thing because of course if you close a channel then it always returns the nil result instantly. So that means all of these can get their nil function and just leave just by closing the channel. They're guaranteed to get that as soon as they finish running whatever last function they were doing. And then we're just gonna count down until all of those have finished before we leave. And so we just listen for an all done message and it should be okay. I'm just gonna start now, tab edit um, works underscore test.go. And what was our package? Would it work? That makes sense. Um, package works. Um, func capital T test waiting T pointer to testing dot T. Okay. And so now the function I'm going to test will just be using sleep okay so um, because that takes time and it will help me to see what's actually worked so 
we need our weight group. So that's WG colon equals new, because we're in the right package, right? But normally that would be um, work, works.new external to the package. Then we will add all of our things. So for i colon equals naught, i is less than 1000, i plus plus, we are going to create a thousand functions and send them to this channel. So we do that by saying wg.add and in here we put a new func and we'll sleep a tenth of a second, eh? Time dot second over ten. So in theory if we run it with 50 weight groups, oh yeah, we need to put that in, 50, 50 workers, right? And a thousand operations, and they all sleep for a tenth of a second, then that's a thousand divided by 10 is 100, divided by 50 is two. So we should have this whole thing take two seconds. And for the sake of making sure I can see that we've done something, I'm gonna put P, only equals zero, that's an int, and there l uh, sync dot lock. Um, sorry, that should be mutex. Mutex. So basically, I'm just gonna add a few things here. So l dot lock p plus plus l dot unlock so that shouldn't take very long and we've got the other things sleeping for their various amounts of time and so now we can see that something's been added now we need a we need a fail condition for our test so if p hasn't if p is not a thousand when we finish oh we're missing a thing wg dot wait and in theory this whole thing should take two seconds and p should reach a thousand yeah so if p does not equal 1000, then we have a problem. Um, t.log and p does not equal 1000 instead equals p. Not to do the job. And oh, if we use a comma, I think that's safer. Then it'll take and t dot fail. In theory, it's scripts cc works. Um, go test missing return at the end of a function. Oh, did I do that again? <laughs> when I was doing the test version for this function, I I think I made the same mistake. So. Go to 37. Yeah, we actually need to return res, right? <laughs> and that test apparently completed in two seconds and it all works. That's kind of nice. Let's just check that that actually does work by editing the test and seeing if it still fails. See if, if, it, if it completes correctly. So P, yeah, so that P actually is a thousand, but it was expecting one thousand and one to pass the test. So, so yeah, the test has worked. So I'm just going to go through this again and explain what we have created, how we've used it. Let's let's look at the API from the external point. Um, so we create a new working group which has fifty workers. Then we send it a thousand functions which it will run all of in term, and these, these functions take time, that's not actually vital. And then we run wg.wait, and just by calling that function, we know that this will wait until all of those have completed their operation, and then we can finish our function or do whatever else it is we need to do. 
Uh, so that's the outside. It's just three functions, new, add functions, and wait for them to complete. You shouldn't call this function more than once because obviously it's going to close the channel. And if you try and close the channel more than once, it will panic. That's something that happens in Go. Um, and we'll have another look at the inside and see if looking at this before makes some more sense. So here's our struct. Our main channel is our in channel and our all done channel just says all of the functions have run and complete. Um, and those are just accessed by the add and wait method. On the outside and on the in inside we create these functions and associate with them the data from this, the res.main and here the all done so that this wait group working group is now listening for that. We have an internal procedure done channel which listens to see that each individual procedure is finished because we create an, a fixed number of them so when we've received a fixed number of them have completely completed then we can leave and move on to whatever else we want to do so and this is where we listen to that here and let me know if you have any questions about this. I, I would love to answer some questions. I feel like this is relatively straightforward and obvious, although it did take me a bit longer to write the first time than this time. So, but it, it's hopefully if you can use a, a, a pattern like this or even just this library, because I'm going to put this up online. It'll actually be as workers dot go in code convoy, sorry, github.com forward slash code convoy forward slash workers should be the the library you'll find it under feel free to use it i really don't care um yeah and have a great however long it's been oh by the way in case you're wondering why it's been a while since i put up a video we had a baby and that was kind of nice her name's felicity <laughs> um i probably won't put up a picture right now Ta-ra!